Hey, this is Contra Thoughts. I'm Richard, and we're gonna be talking about some criminals in Canada. Coming up next. All right, we've got Canadian pastor Tim Stevens arrested and released. He was arrested now twice, once in May and once in June. And we're gonna be looking at some content um, video of his sermon. He preached this last Sunday. As I said, I'm not super fast. Today is the uh, ninth. And uh, anyway, so this is last Sunday, this last Sunday, uh, but I like to let things settle a little bit and I'm very busy, I've already said that. So Tim Stevens has been arrested. Uh, it's these criminals, I mean, I don't know what these Canadians are doing, uh, but these Christians, they're just rabble rousers and, and basically like terrorists. I mean, come on, let's be honest. I mean, you got James Coates, you got the Pulowski guy and his brother and uh, Stevens and one or two other guys as well. And so, yeah, I mean, they're getting arrested because, you know, they're breaking the law or mandate, which isn't really a law, but, you know, don't tell the government. Uh, nevertheless, they've been arrested and released and arrested and released and seizures of buildings and properties and so on. Uh, but let's just listen to this brief uh, video of Stevens and we'll unpack it a little bit and talk about an article also from christianpost.com. Um, it's been it's been busy this past year. Uh, I think the only Sundays I've had off is either when we had we had a baby in December, and so Alex preached that week, and then I've I've been in in jail, uh, <laughs> detained you could say detained for a few weeks in May and then again in June, and so Alex preached and then also Jacob Rion preached uh, for you all last week, and so I'm thankful for those brothers preaching. But besides that, I've I've, I've been preaching and, and, and involved in that, especially with all the guidelines and restrictions. I wanted to make sure that uh, the weight of any enforcement came upon me and not upon uh, the members of the congregation. All right. So we can see that there that uh, he's very lighthearted and uh, trusting God. He's trusting the Lord. Not quite the same as I did an episode a few weeks or however long ago it was about Pulowski. He's a little bit more of a fiery character. Not quite the same flavor of Christian, at least as... Uh, Stevens or <clears throat> Coates is, James Coates. But nevertheless, this is persecution. Now, should we call people Nazis? Probably not. Uh, but he's also from Poland. And uh, he saw much of that uh, nonsense happen in his church there. That's Pulowski, of course. I wouldn't, again, condone uh, people calling each other names, as it were. But this is unlawful. Uh, by the government, and they are not upholding the sword. They're not doing what they're called to do from Romans 13 uh, and upholding law and bearing the sword against those who are actual lawbreakers. I mean, the question I have, a couple things. One, for the Canadian government and Prime Minister uh, Trudeau is where are all the imams, the Muslim imams being arrested uh, or the Jewish Orthodox priests or... Um, the rabbis or, or whomever, uh, where are these other, why, why are these solid Bible teaching pastors? It's kind of, kind of a unnerving uh, question maybe for the uh, prime minister there, but of course it's tongue in cheek and he's not going to watch this. But we can also look here, Canadian pastor who was arrested. This is the christianpost.com. For outdoor worship. You have to ask outdoor worship. Yeah, uh, just down in the article it says, A police helicopter discovered where Stevens was holding worship gatherings and arrested him soon after from his home where his witness, his children witnessed the arrest and cried. He has seven children. And this guy spent almost three weeks in prison. A, a wife and seven children. Seven. They're not paying me. Uh, although if they want to, just kidding, but not really. They, they arrested him for having church outside, people. Outside, okay? They weren't even inside, which is like, oh, that's terrible. Except for, you know, MacArthur, thousands and thousands of people. Sure, a few people got sick here and there over the time that they've met. There have been a few other places. California is just a few steps behind Canada in their insanity. Um, Canada doesn't have quite the same laws as the United States does. But if they can do this to people in Canada or even in California and other places, they'll do this anywhere. And this is exactly what big government tyrants do. This is what 
tyrants gonna be tyrants, uh, as it were. As that's a new phrase. You can coin it if you want to. Make a little shirt. Tyrants gonna be tyrants, and um, <laughs> they don't care about God. They don't care about the authority of God. They don't say Jesus is Lord. They don't even acknowledge God at all. They're not embracing, even if they don't believe. That's okay. Fine. I'm not forcing you to believe. I'm not saying you necessarily. Uh, I'm saying you should believe as prime minister, as police officers, as uh, magistrates. But the magistrate is to keep the peace, is to enforce the law, not man r mandates and random dictates from random people, but rather enforce the law. Well, that's they're not doing that. They're literally making up stuff. Canada, by the way, has less people than California. Keep that in mind. And it's a much, much bigger place. I mean, we've had multiple different meetings now. I, when I covered several episodes back with uh, it's called Persecute. I think it's episode 10. There's been huge events. We were just at the Southern Baptist Convention with 16, 20,000 people in a given area in Nashville. No one got sick. There's been no outbreaks. And by the way, no one was wearing a mask. No one was social distancing. I mean, it was shoulder to shoulder. And it was as if no, there was nothing. And Canada lives in this parallel universe, apparently, where they're still freaking out about this, that, and the other. Nonsense. But we can see here that Stevens is being arrested, but he's praising God. He's thankful to the Lord. He's thankful that God has built his church. He says uh, after being arrested for a number of weeks, uh, he's coming back. And he again preached on 4th of July. Wonderful to see. And so we can be thankful for that. I just want to comment on that, that we must be thankful for these things and thankful unto the Lord. When persecution comes, that he obeyed God rather than man. Acts chapter 4 um, and looking at many other passages where it says, is it right in the sight of God or, or, or you to obey God? Well, you must judge. And they judged and they arrested this pastor who is outside, find him with a helicopter and then arrest him at his house in front of his children, seven children. I mean, you're in jail for, for 17 nights and 18 days. So you have a lot of time to think, a lot of time to pray by God's grace, a lot of time to read scripture. And a lot of time to see your faces in my mind and pray for you all. So encouraged to hear that you continue to gather, continue to sing and worship. So encouraged that, that many of you were strengthened and emboldened in your faith. Because when my faith feels weak to know that you're being strengthened, it gives me strength. And so each day I prayed for you and I longed that Christ would minister to me. And I longed that Christ would minister to you all, that, that no one would fail in their faith or in their hope or in their rejoicing in the Lord. And each day he sustained me and each day I heard of his work among you and in the world. And the text we're going to look at this morning has been one of those texts that's been on my mind even beyond this, these past two weeks, but even in these past number of months. As we made a decision last May to gather together again as a church. And then it seemed, especially as we got into the winter and the December and January and then into the spring, each and every week, it seemed like the consequences were higher and higher and higher and higher. And this text in Matthew 10 talks about these increasing consequences, this opposition that people face as they stand for the Lord Jesus Christ. And so as it has ministered to me and encouraged me, I now desire to take this text and, and to, to show it to you here this morning and to encourage you with it. He tweeted a tweet about uh, John Bunyan, by the way, saying, if you release me today, I'll preach tomorrow. Uh, Bunyan was arrested and put in jail for years. He was in jail for years. He even has quotes about uh, basically not not have uh, what is it I think he has a moss growing over his eyelids that he would not renounce the faith and of course Bunyan had children uh, a wife and children as well this was hundreds of years ago but nevertheless we can still see that persecution has come it's come before it will come again and we must stand firm and the gates of Hades the gates of hell will not prevail against the church and even if there's persecution which now is very evident it's not it's not a surprise, it's not a secret, it's not a question anymore. It is evident in Canada there is persecution. 
just because they're not beheading people or killing people or or seizing long-term property, long-term seizing property or anything like that, they're still persecuting. No one ever comes, by the way, and says, hey, by the way, I'm going to persecute you now. Because again, where are the imams? Where are where are the the uh, Jewish rabbis? Where are the other people? Where are the, where's the Church of Scientology practitioners? Pretty big in Canada, by the way. Where are these people? Where are they being arrested? I mean, if they are, I mean, I want to see them. Let's, let's talk about them too, because that's still heinous and wrong that the government's arresting them too. But I've only ever seen Christians, pastors being arrested. So anyway, he says, today I'm very thankful. This is to Rebel News. They were outside there. Um, this is in the article again. Today, I'm very thankful, Rebel News quoted the pastor saying, as I'm thankful that the restrictions are done and rescinded, including our court orders that go along with it. It's very good. Again, they're silly restrictions. It's unnecessary. They shouldn't even exist. He was arrested for having outdoor services. So again, notice there's the, hypo- the hypocrisy of, is Costco closed? Right? They've got Costco in Canada. What about all their supermarkets? What about even meeting and, and, and sporting events and such things? You can't tell me that Pastor Tim Stevens or James Coates or some of these other places, they have thousands of people all together. I mean, I've been to Costco more than once, <laughs> and they're all about the same. And I've been to more than one. And they're big, and they're inside. And even if you're wearing, wearing a mask, you're still around people. You're still touching people, rubbing shoulders with people, and so on. And so it, it's just the hypocrisy uh, of the Canadian government to focus on churches and basically... Uh, arrest pastors for doing what they're called to do in being pastors, meeting together as Christians. We are called to do that, not forsaking the gathering together, not forsaking as the habit is of some, but gathering together. Yes, sure, early on last year, sure, we want to be cautious. First few weeks, maybe a month or so, what's going on? All right, we've got the lay of the land. Now we've got the Fauci emails. Those are all out. We've got much of the restriction, much of the hypocrisy and the lies from the mainstream media. You know, it's a it's a it's a it's a leak uh, in China in the Wuhan lab. No, it's not really a leak. That's all conspiracy theory. Now that's pretty much evident. <laughs> not to mention the multiple other things that have happened throughout the last fifteen to sixteen months. That there's zero trust. Zero trust should be in the establishment, in the CDC, in who, in in just the health officials in general. And yet they still make up random dictates and random laws just for the sake of making up and controlling people. That's what they want to do. And they want people to bow the knee to the state. That's what they want. And when you're a Christian, when you're a solid believer, when you have Jesus as Lord, you don't have Jesus as Lord and put Caesar up next to Jesus. The president, the prime minister, the governor, he's not sitting or she's not sitting next to Jesus. Okay, that was the problem in the Roman world in the first century. The Romans would have accepted Jesus' hand down. They would have said, Christians, come on in. That's fine. Yeah, we got a Jesus. Throw him up on the Roman shelf. we got a bunch of different gods up here. Oh, he does healings and he walks on water. That's pretty cool. He makes bread and fish from nothing. Yeah, that sounds great. Let's do that too. But, you know, you, you got to worship the other gods too. In fact, the early Christians were called atheists <clears throat> because they did not worship the Roman gods. They worshiped the one true and living God. But persecution has come. It has come and it will come again. And this is persecution, ladies and gentlemen, no doubt about it. But I'm, I'm happy to see that he is out. I'm happy to see that they did not stop meeting. I'm happy to see that um, he's got joy, counting it all joy, uh, when he encountered various trials. We see this from James. Knowing that the testing of your faith produces endurance. Philippians 1, 12. And this is just so applicable, though it's written... <laughs> almost 2,000 years ago. But I want you to know, brethren, that the things which happened to me, being arrested for having church, have actually turned out for the furtherance of the gospel. Now you know about Tim Stevens and James Coates and many others, and you've, they've been interviewed that they wouldn't normally have been interviewed. They've had more exposure, both from the mainstream media and secondary media, alternative media that this is, and many other Christians praying for them, giving money, supporting them. You wouldn't know them otherwise turned out for the furtherance of the gospel. Verse 13, so that it has become evident in the whole palace guard, or some say praetorian guard, that's the Roman establishment, basically the secret service for the emperor, like the elites, that you're never going to get a witness for them otherwise, unless you get arrested. And all the rest, that my chains are in Christ, and most of the brethren in the Lord 
having, here it is, and Tim Stevens said it already, having become confident in my chains, in my prison, in my little prison cell, are much more bold to speak the word without fear. I'm more bold now. Now if I get arrested, I will say, well, count it all joy. I've already been arrested. The other guys have been arrested. If you've been arrested, if you're going to be arrested perhaps, whether you're preaching the gospel on the street or in your church or you're just reading the Bible in some closed country, you could be arrested. But knowing that the steadfastness produces endurance, James says. And here Paul talking to the Philippians, who's in prison, he's in prison now, writing, I've become, they've become confident in my chains and more bold to speak the truth. So the very thing that Satan says, you're done, we're done, I'm knocking you out, you're done, I'm kicking you out, no, 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 to scare people into submission. If you stand firm, God uses that and emboldens many other people that they wouldn't have been emboldened otherwise. They wouldn't have stood strong otherwise because now you're, they're looking at you and saying, well, if he can do it, I can do it. If she can do it, I can do it. That's, that's how the Lord works. He takes everything. Satan takes it, turns it over, and God says, yeah, I'm going to use that, and we're actually going to promote the gospel. The very thing that you wanted to do, Satan, in closing these churches, I mean, they arrested this church, basically, physically, the building, and also Grace Life, where Pastor James Coates is. Uh, I think they've since gotten their building back. Fine, we'll go meet in the field. Oh, fine, you're going to arrest me? That's fine, I'm going to go. And now there's going to be people that now know about me and know about the gospel and say, that thing that he believes, I want to believe that because that is firm. That is something that's tangible. That guy believes in something beyond this natural realm. He believes in something bigger. He has a big God because he said, you know, praise God, I'm here. I'm speaking the word boldly and other people are speaking the word even more boldly because they're confident in my chains. Lastly, he says, most of all, I'm thankful for God. He, he added, I'm thankful that he's built his church and that he sustained the church of Fairview, Fairview Baptist. Baptist, baby. Oh. I'm thankful that he strengthened me my, by my wife, my family, and that through this, people have come to know the saving love of the Lord Jesus Christ. People have been strengthened in this country and around the world. And so, for these reasons, I'm thankful. End quote. So he says again, that's... Philippians 1, 12, 13, 14, 15. That he is thankful. Why is he thankful? Because the things that he couldn't have done otherwise, just like Paul had an audience with the Praetorian Guard, the, 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 the elite establishment, those who are protecting Caesar. He's there in his chain. Say, hey, who's Jesus? You have new life? What about repentance for, for sin? What about forgiveness? Can your gods offer that? Whatever Paul said. Similarly, I'm preaching through Acts chapter 4 and Peter and John, they've healed in Acts chapter 3. They've healed a man in the temple and that gets a whole crowd. They're teaching and preaching about Jesus, draws a crowd. This is the third time Peter preaches. He's teaching. He gets set aside. They get thrown in prison. You know, it's all Satan has uh, to offer us, been thrown in prison. And he then, Peter stands firmly in front of the Sanhedrin. So these are the Jewish establishments, 71 plus, so it's a 70 plus the high priest, so 71, and he's there and boldly proclaims them. It was actually those guys who earlier, just maybe months or a year earlier, depending on how you read it, killed Jesus. They actually, they actually murdered Jesus on the cross. And he boldly stands there and they're like, well, what do we do with this? <laughs> this guy's healed, we can't deny that. And so they confer and they come back and they call Peter and James or uh, Peter and John back in. And they're like, well, this is what we're going to do. I got a great idea. Let's, let's just tell them not to do it again. And it's like, I got, okay, I don't know if that'll work, but we'll see. And they're like, just, just don't do it again. And Peter and John are like, mm. yeah, I mean, whether it's right before God to, to listen to you rather than God, you, you got to judge. But we're going to keep doing what we're called to do. You guys have a nice day. <laughs> so it's... Uh, Unbelievable. I mean, Alberta health services should be ashamed of themselves. Um, they're out arresting God-fearing men who are taking care of their families, their communities, and probably letting other criminals go free or at least not focusing on them because they're flying in helicopters to try and find some worship service. Like, guys, come on. Seriously? Seriously? I mean, those police, police officers, again, should be ashamed of themselves. They are not doing what they're called to do in the, as they're magistrate and their power to wield the sword. They're wielding the sword in vain. They're doing it wrong. So anyway, that's that. Um, 
Perhaps I'll cover this more later, but I could go on, but we'll stop there. Don't forget to be against the world for the sake of the world. This is uh, a big deal. This is a big deal. Be in prayer for these men and these churches. Until next time, take care.